So, I'm pretty sure this video is going to be really boring. Um, I can't find any way to make this fun or interesting. Um, but I told y'all I wanted to do my labor and delivery story. Um, it's kind of long. Um, and like I said, there's no way like I can think of to make this interesting. Um, so, I guess here I am to bore you today. Um, so, I guess... I want to start by telling this really funny story that kind of leads into it, but I thought it was kind of, kind of funny. Um, so January 25th, 2014 was my husband's birthday. And let me just say Ruger's born January 27th, 2014. Well, okay. My husband's birthday was 91, but you know what I mean. Um, so anyway, um, so the day of my husband's birthday, he... I had to work that Saturday, it was a Saturday, and he had to work, he had mandatory, and he was on his way to work, and it was, like, we're in Wisconsin, and it was snowing and blowing and all that stuff, so, um, on his way to work, he, like, on the road to when he has to go to work, one of the roads he has to take, it blows really bad, because it's, like, all cornfields, and, um, so, he was driving, and... <laughs> He went off the road. He had gust wind and it was like really slippery. Um, and he went off the road. And so I went and took the truck, his dad's truck that we were using, the big one. And um, it's got a light bar on it and stuff. It You can use it for towing. So I went to go pull him out and I was 41 weeks pregnant. I was overdue. And um, and no, the story's not going to end up me having a baby in a truck. So don't, don't worry about that. Um, so anyway, he... Um, so I went to pull him out, could not pull him out, like my truck was like sliding everywhere, it was so slippery. So he just got in the truck with me, left his truck there, we were going to call our buddies that own a shop and have a tow truck. And so uh, we ended up just running to get breakfast, waited for them to open, and then we called them and we said, hey, can you come get our truck? So we met them out there and they're like, we don't see your truck. And we're like, we don't either. So we're like, great, it's a guy, probably most likely impounded. Um, so, yeah, sure, sure enough, on my husband's birthday, um, we had to go get his truck out of impound, which was like a hundred something dollars. So then, um, we got his truck back and just hung out the rest of the day. It was his birthday. And then I had, we had plans for Monday that I was supposed to go in and get induced. And that night on my husband's birthday, um, so like, it was like midnight, like literally like midnight. I woke up and I was in excruciating pain. So I was like, I think I'm in labor. Like, so I went out to our living room and I sat on my exercise ball and started bouncing because, like, that was the only way it felt like I could soothe the pain. Um, and I started timing it and it was contractions. They were coming. They were about five minutes apart, lasting like 20 to 30 seconds or so. Um, so I called labor and delivery. They said, just wait it out. Wait till it gets like more, like closer and like longer. So. I just stayed up all night by myself. My husband, like, was sleeping, and, um, I don't know, it was, like, 5 a.m., and I knew my friend, um, uh, possibly was gonna go to work, or would be working, or no, it was, like, it was, like, 4.30 a.m., and I knew she had to get up and go to work. Um, she worked at 6 a.m., so I called her, she answered, and she was still sleeping. I felt kind of bad. Um, so when she woke up, like, when I woke her up, I was like, I think I'm in labor, and she's CNA, and her mom works in the emergency room, so, like, I was like, she would know. She'd be able to come over and just, like, make sure, like, feel my belly. You know, you can, like, feel the contractions. So, she went and grabbed breakfast, and, like, cat station breakfast sandwich, and came over, and we ate. Like, I was able to kind of eat. Like, I didn't feel so great, but, like, I was like, I need to eat. I need to eat. Oh, I'm a fat person, what do you expect? <laughs> um, sorry. I love food. I, I do. I love food. Um, anyway, so she brought food over. I ate some of it, and then she's like, yeah, you're in labor. And, um, she knew I wanted a natural labor, which also the hospital knew this, too. And so she's like, yeah, just wait it out a while. Wait till they get closer. And, like, blah, 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 blah. So, that's what I did. And by, like late like afternoon I called back and I was like they are really painful like like when I called them I was having a little bit hard time talking when I was having the contractions when I was talking to her and she's like well you need to wait until you cannot talk 
when you're in heaven contractions. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. Um, so, um, anyway, late afternoon, um, my husband's mom called. She wanted to see us. So we met up at the mall because I wanted to walk and try to get the contractions go faster. And so we met at the mall. We got some food and um, I had a breadstick. And so then we just started walking around and um, I think we walked probably approximately like five to seven miles. Like we walked a lot. And as I was walking, I had my phone out, and I had my contraction counter and all that. And so my contractions were still like five minutes apart, but they were lasting like a minute. And so then I was like, I can't walk anymore. Like I was just tired and I was worn out. Um, so we got in the truck and I called labor and delivery and I'm like, I'm just going to come in and get checked out. I just want to see like if I'm dilated or anything. Um. And because the winter was so bad that I, or the day, well, like, the winter was horrible last year. But, like, the snow, I didn't want to go home, which was, like, we were, like, kind of in between where the hospital was and our house. So, like, I was like, I don't want to drive all the way back home and then have to, like, drive all the way back to the city. And, like, it's like a, I don't know, a half an hour, 40 minute drive. So... I didn't want to have to do that. So I was like, I just want to come in and get checked, see what you guys have to say. Um, so I went in and I had to see a midwife that wasn't my midwife and I had never met her before. She was super rude and obnoxious. I did not like her at all. And um, she's like, well, you're only this far and you're mi like, my contractions have slowed down at this point. Um, and so she's like, but since the weather's horrible, we'll keep you here. And I'm like, damn right you will excuse my language I'm sorry um anyway um so uh that night that holy like, cold night I was in and out of the labor tub trying to soothe the pain um and um so yeah that's pretty much went on all night until about four o'clock they um sorry there's somebody outside my window um uh they uh started me on Pitocin because uh, by this point, it was 4 a.m. on Monday, and Monday I was supposed to go in that morning to get induced. So they started me on Pitocin trying to get my contractions to go faster. Um, so I was on that for a while, and then at 7 o'clock, or I was on that until, like, obviously I had them, but at 7 o'clock, <sighs> my, my, um, my, mid my midwife came in, and she, um, she checked me and everything. She's like, yeah, you still got a ways to go. I seriously do not remember how far I was at that point. At that point, I still had not slept at all. So I was exhausted. I had only had, what, that breakfast my friend got me and then a breadstick. So I was starving. I was tired and all that. So um, I told, she told me that we needed to have an epidural. Um, I was in labor for so long and I had not slept and I had not eaten that if I didn't take the epidural, that I would most likely end up having a C-section because I was so worn out that I wouldn't be able to push. Um, so at, I don't remember what time, I'm thinking 12, 1 o'clock it was in the afternoon, they finally gave me the epidural. Um, that worked for a couple hours, um, and I ended up falling asleep probably, like my husband said, I said, oh yeah, it's I can feel it working, and then like five minutes later, I was out because I couldn't feel it anymore. <laughs> Um, so then four, like, it was like four hours later, um, I woke up and I was crying and I was like, oh my God, I can feel it again. What's going on? Um, and then they're like, well, the machine's failing. So they had to call somebody up to come fix the machine. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot. I'm really sorry. And, uh, they fixed them. They thought they fixed the machine and then they started giving me bullets, which is like where it's supposed to work faster. Um. And nothing was happening. So they had to have somebody else come up and fix it. And finally, when it was starting to work, she comes in. She's like, all right, I'm going to check you. I'm like, okay. She texts me. She's like, it's time to start pushing. And I was like, seriously? Because it had just, like, barely started working again. Um, so at that point, I mean, it was, I don't even want to do the math. What time it was? Um, all I know is that then I ended up pushing for three and a half hours. Um, while I was pushing, was so funny. They wanted me to hold my own legs, which was fine at first, but after like an hour, I like 
could not just hold my legs by myself so I had to keep resting them the nurses would like catch my legs when I was done pushing like each time I pushed and then I'd like slap my legs to have them give them back to me because I was so worn out um so uh and then I started getting really thirsty and throughout this whole process I had like three bags of fluids so they my husband had a little like cup of ice chips and there was some melted water in there and stuff with the straw I'm like give me some water like I'm freaking out like I was so thirsty like my mouth like if if you go into labor make sure to bring chapstick because I ended up having him put chapstick on my lips because I was just like dried out even after having so much fluids so anyway he was not supposed to give me just water to drink but he did because he's so nice like that and so like I chugged and chugged um a bunch of water well next thing we know like two minutes later I like barfed all over myself but I was still pushing and they're like well we're not gonna change your gown now and whatever so I had to sit in my own puke and push which sucked it was disgusting like we just could not get that puke bag in time um so then I pushed finally three and a half hours later he was born um due to the fact that it took so long um they ended up having the NICU people in there ready um, in case there was something wrong because I was pushing for so long. And um, he was fine. He came out. He didn't cry right away. They ended up clipping his umbilical cord to get him to cry. Well, she pinched it first, I think. And then she cut it. My husband refu didn't want to cut it. That just, he wasn't um, comfortable with that. We had talked about it before, so it wasn't a big deal. And so, um, yeah. So then she gave, then I, I got him on my chest. They pulled my disgusting puke-covered gown off me and gave them to me and then they they had like warm blankets that they were like heated like not heated heated but they had been warmed up somehow i don't know what they do don't ask me and they put it on me and he was under it we were just cuddling and when he was in there and they took the monitor off my belly they put this monitor thing on his head and so um when he was born i was holding on to him they had to get it off of him and he had so so much hair that they like untangle it and it sounded like he was screaming at that point either way. So, like, but it sounded like they were, like, ripping his hair out, um, which I felt so horrible. I was, like, crying out. I don't know. I was crying of happy tears, more or less. But, um, so then we just spent time together. And funny story, um, so my stepmom and my husband's mom was in the room. She, my husband's mom was not supposed to be in the room. She ended up being in the room, whatever. Um... And so my stepmom ran and got my dad, who's waiting in the waiting room, and brings him in right after I had pushed out the placenta and she was stitching me up. I ended up having seven stitches. Um, he comes in, my legs wide open, she's like stitching it up, and he's like, like his face, like I, I cannot recreate the shockingly disgusted and crazed face. Like he just didn't, my dad did not know what to do. Um, so he's like, where's the baby? And at that point, um... I had given them him, we had cuddled for a while, and then I just wanted them to weigh him. I was really excited. I was like, how much does he weigh so big? He was huge. Like, even the nurse said he has farmer's hands. His hands were so, they were huge and, like, chubby. Like, they weren't just, like, long alien fingers. They were, like, chubby, big hands, like his daddy. So, um, so he was over there, and my dad then walked over there away from looking at my stuff. And, um... And then, funny story too, before they took, right before they took him to weigh him, um, we had been cuddling and um, they were really surprised that because I was, I was 10 days late, um, he had um, not uh, pooped in the womb. And um, so anyway, when they took him off me, I had this big old glob of poo and I was like, I don't even care. Like, I don't care because it's better that he pooped here, like out here than in there. You know what I mean? So... Um, I don't know, I just thought that was funny. So anyway, um, they weighed him and everything, and then they gave him back to me right away. And then we went to the postpartum, which um, was ridiculously stupid. Because when we, I had him at 10.53, um, by the time we got to postpartum, it was like midnight. And then they're like, okay, well you need to watch this safety video. And I'm like, seriously, I just, I just want to sleep. Because he was sleeping at this point. And so I had to watch a stupid, I don't even know how long it was, video. And um, and then by the time that was over, when I could have been sleeping this entire time, 
Ruger woke up and he was hungry. So I had to feed him and, you know, all that and change his diaper and everything like that. And I was just so ticked off that I could have gotten like an hour of sleep. It was just, it was ridiculously dumb. But anyway, so, um, we did breastfeed and, um, I did have him room in with me. I never had him go to the nursery. I knew that there was a chance that they'd give him formula and I do not have anything against people who use formula, but, um, my choice was to breastfeed and I, I fought so hard at breastfeeding and maybe I'll make a video on that. Um, the struggle, struggles I went through to breastfeed, um, kind of hard, you know, so, um, I'm sorry, I apologize for saying um a lot. I guess that's how I process my brain. Uh, so anyway, but that, that's about it. Like, and then I can't even tell you about like the, the stay. It was so just in and out. Like, I don't, there was a TV. I remember a TV being on all the time and stuff, but like, I was just so like infatuated with having my baby boy that I didn't even, I didn't even care like what was going on and he wasn't really sleeping cause my milk wasn't coming in. So it was just, it was a really, really long stay, but it was like three days, but I, I can only remember sections of it. Um, like stuff that happened. I mean, we had a few people come visit, but I really didn't want anybody to come visit. Uh, winter, winter everywhere, you know, like viruses and colds. And I'm just like, I just don't want my, my newborn to get sick. So anybody that did come in, ha I asked them to wash their hands and sanitize their hands uh, so that he would not get sick. So, um, I'm really sorry this video is like, 15 minutes long, 16 minutes long. I know it was going to be rambling and I knew there was like no way I could make this interesting at all. Um, just me sitting here talking to the camera. So that's fun. You want to see something interesting? I get something interesting. Ben, come here. Come here. Hold that thought. Okay. But no, who doesn't want to see Bandit? Who doesn't want to see Bandit? Bandit, say hi. Say hi. Say, that was the most boring thing ever to listen to her talk and talk and talk and talk. He's a good dog. I tell you what though, if you want a really, really good dog, definitely, I would say Huskies. We've owned two and, um, best dogs ever. Although, make sure to do your research because they are very high strung and kind of a lot of work. But, but he's such a good boy. He's so good. Anyway, alright guys, so if you want to leave in the comments below any other videos you want to see, um, I have a couple ideas, but I just want to know what you guys want to see. I know I have to be very careful about the copyright stuff with uh, YouTube, some about like music in the background and like TV shows in the background. I don't know, it's kind of dumb because if it's out there publicly, then why does it matter, but that's my opinion. Um... So yeah, let me know. I really want to hear feedback. I really want to know what you guys want um so yeah just let me know and i will see you guys next time